Well, hello everybody. I am Dana, AKA Leafy Diva on all of my socials. And today I like to invite you to repot with me while I talk about why I use Lechuza Pond. I will be converting this beautiful Hoya Callistophylla from soil to pond, well actually from cocoa core to pond, cocoa core husk. In the between, I'll be giving you guys some tips and tricks. So if that sounds good to you, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button and let's go ahead and get into it. This is pond. This is pond. It is a mineral substrate. It is made by Lechuza, though you don't have to buy the Lechuza made pond. You can make pond yourself. It is a mineral substrate that consists of pumice, zeolite, lava rock, and a slow release fertilizer. Normally it has a slow release fertilizer in it, but I got the basic pond, which is a little bit cheaper. That does not come with fertilizer. I use liquid fertilizer, so I don't really need it. We are also going to be repotting in this self-watering planter. This has worked really well for me with all of the plants that I've acclimated from overseas. So we are going to get the Callistophylla in here. But first we need to get all the soil off. All right, why would anyone use pond over soil? Well, a lot of you may know that houseplants generally are aeroids and aeroids grow in the rainforest usually, and they're epiphytic, meaning they grow up trees, they don't grow in soil. Some do grow in soil, but others, they climb trees. Their roots are just covered in leaf litter right on the tree. And so that means that these roots usually need a lot of aeration. They're a lot different from your terrestrial plants that grow in the ground. And for that reason, we usually want to get the chunkiest soil mix possible. And for lots of people, that's going to be a mix that includes something like orchid bark or cocoa husk like these, as well as perlite, the large size perlite like this. Uh, people all put all types of amendments in their soil. And all you're really trying to do is get the air flowing and you're trying to get high drainage so that your plant's not sitting in water for too long. And so aeration is key. Pond, this is it right here. So what the pond does is it provides that aeration. It provides that drainage that the plant needs. Now, it also has an added bonus and that is pH balancing. If you use LECA, you know that you have to balance your pH. You usually have to test the pH in the water. You have to pH the fertilizer. Zeolite in the pond is supposed to be a pH balancer so that you don't really have to worry about doing that. I know some people who still do and that's fine, but technically you're not supposed to have to worry about it. What I usually do when I'm transferring a plant like this to pond is I want to first get all the roots clear of any soil or cocoa core. Cocoa core and orchid bark is not your friend when you were transitioning things to pond because they love orchid bark so much that the roots tend to grow inside of the orchid bark, making it extremely difficult to get the roots off of it. So for this, since it's almost completely planted in cocoa husk, this isn't too bad, actually. I've had a lot worse. And so what I'm trying to do here is just get all this off. Now, this is usually a lot easier if you soak the plant before you do this. I always like to start with a well-hydrated plant anyway. You don't have to. It's not a necessity. Another thing that I like about pond is that it is the best companion for a self-watering planter and I use self-watering planters for almost all of my plants because I'm lazy and I don't like to water them so the self-watering planters just take all the guesswork out of watering I can make sure that my plants have a sufficient consistent level of moisture and I just don't have to really worry about that however However, there is a learning curve because it's not always really easy to know in the beginning what the right level is for your water reservoirs. It's also not that straightforward. The type of self-watering pot that you can use with this, there's so many different kinds. I may do another video on that, but I've, I've been across so many. I think what, got, what gets to me a little bit is that people just say, oh, so I don't like self-watering pots. They don't work, but there are different types of self-watering pots. Some that I recommend some that I don't recommend I happen to be loving at the moment these self-watering planters with the wick where is it 
the, the self-watering plant just like these that come with the wick and so the plant's not sitting in water like it is in some of the other self-watering planters but we'll see that in a second it's just all preference and learning and understanding what the best type of self-watering planter is what the best substrate is these can be used with soil but you have to be very very careful it's a lot i understand that a lot of you i listen i read the comments i know a lot of you struggle sometimes because your plants sometimes rot and while that's unfortunate it's just part of learning that's why i always recommend that if you are transferring something over to pine don't do your most expensive plants just don't do it do a pothos <laughs> do a pothos or like a syngodium or something like that just until you get the hang of it because i promise you there may be like a slight learning curve to it but once you get it you just won't want to go back to soil even though i still use soil i like soil i have a lot of plants that are in soil but i really like pine another thing about pine that i hear a lot is that it's expensive and yeah it is it's expensive let's not even like I'm not even going to sugarcoat that. It's expensive. Lechuza makes it. Lechu you can DIY it, but once you price all of the raw materials that go into making pine, you just might as well have gotten it from Lechuza. And unfortunately, Lechuza plays games. <laughs> The chooser plays games. Like they will just decide not to have any in stock for like months and you just won't have any pond so what i've learned to do is stock up on the pond when when they have it in stock right now there's actually a pond shortage and everyone's freaking out but i bought pond several months ago and i bought like four or five large bags of it so i'm good for like the whole year now <laughs> but i do think that the expense kind of turns some people off and rightfully so but that's neither here nor there also like I told you, I like to use self-watering planters with these, and those are also not most inexpensive planters. Lechuza planters are my recommendation, but they definitely cost a lot of money. These particular self-watering planters are in my Amazon storefront. I tried these out specifically because I listened to you guys and you guys told me that you don't want to spend a ton of money on Lechuza. So I tried this out. I think these are like six for like 20. I don't, something like that but these to my surprise work really 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 well like really really well like so well that i wouldn't bought a second batch of them because i like them so much really glad that i have a cheaper alternative i also use the t4u planters i have an amazon storefront list that has all the self-watering planters that i use so you can go check that out but yeah the one that i'm using now today is is the one I, I am the most impressed with that is the least expensive. I got some plant imports in from Indonesia and I have all of them in those self-watering planters and I didn't lose one of them. All of them just immediately started growing roots. So this plant really didn't have a lot of roots to start off with, but I think we're done with this one. I am going to leave this trellis on here for now, but I do have some wire that I'm gonna eventually put this on. So I think that this is clean enough. You just wanna make sure that you get the roots kinda of clean. Some people wash their roots. I have stopped doing that. And the reason why is because I noticed that whenever I wash my roots, especially when you have delicate roots like this, they will go limp, they would get damaged, and then the plant would make all new roots. And so these would just basically die off anyway. So I first took a begonia. His leaves, it has leaves even more delicate than this. And I took a feather duster and I started dusting off the roots to get the soil off. And when I put it directly into the planters, the roots never die. It didn't skip a beat. There was not a leaf that fell. There was not a leaf that browned, nothing. So I have just been using a feather duster to dust the soil off of the leaves. And it doesn't really matter if all the soil's not on the leaf, just as long as a lot of it is moved off. And I just found this is just the most delicate, gentle way to get it into pond without shocking it too much. So that's a little tip for you. Now let's go ahead and get this into the self-watering planter. The reason why I'm so excited about these is because they have a clear inner pot. And a clear inner pot is super important when you're transitioning to pond because I'm always looking to see if the roots are forming correctly, if new roots are popping up and I can't do that. If the pot is not, if the inner liner is not clear, I'm just gonna put the rope right here. Get that down there. And then all I'm gonna do at this point is backfill it with some, what well not backfill, I'm gonna fill it with some pond. Bam, bam, bam. 
All right, there are little holes right here for aeration. There are also little slits for aeration and there are also drainage holes under here for aeration. So these roots, remember, a lot of these plants are epiphytic. So these roots like to have oxygen. They like to have aeration. This gives it the perfect amount. I love these, like I love, 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 love these plants. They also have this little window here. I'm not that fond of that part of it. This little window, they usually catch algae in them, but for pots this small, I can easily take the inner liner out and clean it. But for like really large pots where it gets heavy, I don't want to have to pull the inner liner out every few weeks to clean the algae out of the inner pot. Um, so that's why I like the ones that have the meter. But for the price, this is just the best. Let's go ahead and get our plant in. Get this down here. Pour the rest of the pond in. That was not enough. I'm gonna borrow some pond from another planter. I recycle pond. We'll put it in the inner liner and we're done. It's that simple. Now that I have it in a self-watering planter, I can fill this reservoir up. I know exactly how much water is in here and I can basically set it and forget it. So these are a few of the other hoyas that I have in self-watering planters. This is my favorite one. This is the Lechuza Mini Cube. I really like this one. Um, and then these, this is a Hoya Compacta Variegated. This is a Clemenciorum and they're doing just fine went through the same process I went through with the Callistophila and they are growing. So that's it. I really hope this video was helpful. Drop your questions in the comments. Please subscribe. It helps me out a lot. And I will see you on the next video. Bye.